very good morning my dear students today we are going to continue newton's second law of motion right so don't think that newton's second law of motion is already finished no so there is a lot of information still need to be learned from newton's second law of motion and let's start so newton's second law of motion statement and the expression derivation and few simple numericals we have discussed in the last class so now the topic name is impulse so the name of the topic is the concept of impulse you might have heard about the physical quantity called impulse in your lower classes and let's discuss about it and this is the quantity called impulse which is defined as the change in linear momentum what is this change in linear momentum so impulse is just the change in linear momentum whereas rate of change of linear momentum is what whereas rate of change of linear momentum is a force okay so rate of change of linear momentum is a force from where you got this rate of change of linear momentum is a force topic this you must have got from newton's second law of motion statement itself so what is the statement of newton's second law of motion just try to recall it the rate of change of linear momentum is directly proportional to what directly proportional to the external unbalanced force so that's what this force is the rate of change of linear momentum is a force but change in linear momentum is just the impulse okay clear change in linear momentum is just impulse fine now and this is the same impulse can also be written in this way it can be expressed as the product of look at here expressed as the product of force and time so there is a particular thing you need to learn about this force as well as this is time they're not just the force and time like any other physical quantities right here change in linear momentum is defined and product of force and time is the statement of the impulse it's a product of force and time and you see here and this is the force which is not just like a normal force it is the force having greater magnitude force having of what greater magnitude okay at the same time and this is the time which is also called as time of contact which is of very very short interval which is of a very very short interval of time right so impulse is the product of force and time where that force must be having greater magnitude and time must be time of contact which is having very very short time interval value that's called t and force here and let's write the impulse impulse is denoted with the symbol i which is equal to the product of force and time f is the huge force acting on a body in a short interval of time when huge force acting on a body in a short interval of time so that's called impulse that is called what impulse you can see here so when huge force acting on a body in a short interval of time so that's called impulse okay let's see impulse is defined as what defined as change in linear momentum okay so look at here so that impulse is equal to change in linear momentum so final linear momentum minus initial linear momentum okay now we know newton second law of motion f is equal to ma whereas here i can also write this m into acceleration is what v minus u by 
So what we have got, f is equal to m into v minus u by t. Now what I am doing here, this t is taken to the other side. So what I can write, f into t which is equal to m into v minus u. And this is the derivation of impulse. Impulse is what? Force into time which is equal to change in linear momentum. Is it clear? Clear everyone? So, this is impulse is equal to m into v minus u. We have derived from here by using Newton's second law of motion. And let's concentrate on its units also. In some of the years, even in the case in the exam, there was a question based on units of impulse. Okay. So, the impulse is force into time. Right. So, I'm writing here impulse impulse units we are talking about so as it is force into time force is represented with newton so si unit of force is newton and si unit of time is a second newton second and this can also be written as one newton is what one kg meter per second square into second as it is, is there so one second second cancel here so what is this so kg meter per second kg meter per second is a unit of what it's a unit of linear momentum yes or no see mass into velocity so this is the unit of linear momentum so impulse is having equal units of linear momentum or change in linear momentum we had already discussed when the linear momentum units are kg meter per second it's Change in linear momentum units also will be kg meter per second. I hope it's very clear to you. And this is about the units. These two units. Newton second and kg meter per second. Both are the units of impulse. Okay. So this is about the basic concept of impulse. Listen. One important point I'm just writing here. So let us take this equation. From the equation. From the equation f into t is equal to m into v minus u okay so in this expression the change in linear momentum is constant in this expression what is constant change in linear momentum is constant okay then this f and t are inversely proportional yes or no Definitely it is this. How it is this? I'll show you here carefully. See, f into t is a constant here. So then what I can write? So your f is equal to some constant divided by time. So when a is equal to constant by b, I can directly write this a and b are inversely proportional. Look at here f is inversely proportional to t and from the starting of this session i'm telling you where f is the force having greater magnitude t is the time of contact which is a very 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 short interval of time of contact so this is f and this is t so keep it, this equation aside the most important equation to understand applications of the impulse okay so look at this when time interval is very 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 less this force will be more okay when time interval is less and the force will be more vice versa when time interval is increasing or time of contact is increasing the force will get decreases is it clear everyone i hope you are understanding it now look at the most interesting part applications of the impulse okay so the first application of the impulse i'm writing here first application a karate player first application there will be pile of plates in front of him with a single strike or a single blow of his hand can break the pile of plates. Yes or no? Yes or no? 100% it is yes. Because, you see, a karate player can break the pile of plates with a single blow of his hand. How it is possible? Right? 
And if you have, you might have observed the same. If you observe the situation when he is breaking the pile of plates, he will not break the pile of plates like cutting the vegetables. Yes, sir. A single strike is given on the top plate which is kept in front of him. Look at here. A single strike will be given here. So that means at the contact you need to focus now. A huge force is acting on a body in a short interval of time. S or no. Definitely it's S. So this is the concept and the logic behind he can break the pile of plates. A strong force, a huge force of greater magnitude will be acting on a body in a short interval of time. So that's the reason that's called impulse here. Okay. And let's understand this relation in this case. In this karate player case, what happened? So the time of contact between the hand and pile of plates is very, very less. When time of contact is less, what happens? So the greater force will act which is called impulsive force will act on the pile of plates and he can break the pile of plates. Clear? Now the second application, there are like so many applications in this way we can discuss. And the second application is like a cricket player or you can write cricket fielder while catching a ball which is coming from the greater height while catching a ball Look at here. This is the ball. So the cricket pay player, whether he will catch the ball in this way or whether he will catch the ball in this way. Tell me. Again, I'm showing. So this is the ball coming from the greater height. This is one way of catching the ball. And this is another way of catching the ball, which is the correct process. The correct process is the second method. Why? Why the second method is correct process? Why we need to lower our hands while catching the ball? Look at the interesting part here. Here also there is a concept called impulse is involved here. Each and every movement of your life will be related to the physics. So that's the most beautiful concept about the physics, right? So a cricket player while catching the ball, he will lower his hands just to increase the time of contact between the ball and the hand. Just to increase the time of contact between the ball and the hand. When he increases the time of contact, what happens? The impulsive force, the greater force acting on his hand will get decreased. Understand? Clear? So you only check with yourself while playing cricket, while catching the ball. Right? Throw the ball to some height, try to catch it in the first way or in the second way. In which method your hand gets hurt? Definitely the first method. Okay? Clear? So this is what happens in this case. So while catching a ball, the cricket player will lower his hand to increase the time of contact so that the huge amount of force will act on the body will reduce so that it will never hurt to the fielder. So this is how the concept of impulse and its applications can be discussed. Now let's start the numericals based on Newton's second law of motion. What maximum number of numericals we can solve and we will be solving now. Well, my dear students, let's see the given numerical here. So this is the numerical. It's a combination of the first chapter motion in one dimension where graphical representation of motion we have discussed. So this is the problem. It's a combination of graphical representation of motion and the Newton's second law of motion. And you can see somewhere they are asking about the force. Let's read. Velocity time graph is given. Before reading the problem, I have told you so many times during that chapter, Without reading the further part of the question, you need to analyze the graph, whatever is given. Velocity time graph. The properties of velocity time graph we have. One is the slope of velocity time graph gives you 
acceleration and number two the area under velocity time graph gives you what is that area under velocity time so which gives you displacement okay so these are two things which you need to understand about velocity time graph so this is about velocity time graph interpretation now let's read the problem they have given mass of a car see the velocity time graph of a car is given and its mass is 1000 kg it's fine distance traveled by the car in first 2 seconds they are asking from 0 to 2 seconds the body is moving with constant slope means constant acceleration it is moving from 0 to A but they are not asking about acceleration whereas they are asking about distance traveled by the body in the first 2 seconds there is no Newton's laws are in, involved here it is just the distance traveled means area under the graph right so i am writing here from 0 seconds to 2 seconds area under the graph is equal to half into base base is 2 seconds into height height is 25 meter per second that's 25 so 2 to cancel and displacement or the distance traveled by the body in first 2 seconds is how much here it's 25 meter so that is one answer okay clear and the other answer and the other question let's see here what is the breaking force applied at the end of 9 seconds where is the 9 second here so this is the 9 second at this 9 second the body is moving with a constant velocity yes or no look at here from 0 to A it is moving with uniform acceleration I am writing here O to A it is moving with a uniform acceleration yes or no 100% it is yes and A to B it is moving with constant velocity okay see here with the same constant 25 meter per second it is moving constant velocity means uniform motion no further confusion now from B to C it is moving with uniform retardation because the slope is decreasing here so it's called sorry constant slope but the velocity is decreasing here so that's what I can say it's B to C it is a uniform retardation what is this it is a uniform retardation okay now if you understand this, that this solving this second numerical is very simple. What is the braking force applied at the end of 9 seconds to bring the car to stop in 2 seconds? Look at here. At this point, the car is moving with the velocity, I can say 25 meters per second. Yes or no? See here. Here, the braking force is applied how much? So that the body will come to rest. You can see here. Here the final velocity is 0 meters per second. So the body is coming to the rest in 2 seconds. So from 9 seconds to 11 seconds. So the time gap is 2 seconds. Right? So simple. F is equal to MA. F is equal to MA. At this point, force is applied. So what is that F here? Which is equal to mass is how much? 1000 kilogram into acceleration. What is acceleration here? I told you slope of velocity time graph gives you acceleration. What is the slope from here to here? What is the slope? You can see this divided by this one. Yes or no? Yes or no? So there is a triangle here. For this triangle you can find the slope. What is the slope? Y-axis interval by x-axis interval or height of the triangle by base of the triangle or Opposite side of this angle divided by adjacent side of this angle. Anything can be made, can be used to find the slope. So now here acceleration is slope of this. So it is 25 meter per second by 2 seconds. I can say here 25 by 2. Okay. Slope opposite y-axis interval by x-axis interval is 2 seconds. So this I can write it as 22, 12.5. Okay, so 
here I can write f is equal to one zero gone here and the point will come to here 125 into 100 so 125 into 100 means two zeros are available here so f is equal to 12,500 newton that's called the breaking force to be applied here so that the body will come to rest within two seconds so that's about right I hope it's very easy for you now let's take another problem in the last class in your assignment I have given a question which is based on finding the change in linear momentum finding the change in linear momentum okay finding the change in linear momentum only the magnitude they are asking find the magnitude of change in linear momentum okay now what is it exactly imagine it's a ball there is a ball of mass m is thrown towards the ball with the speed v after striking the ball the ball is coming back with the same speed v the mass of the ball will not change okay with the same speed it's rebounding back rebouncing back now the question is find the change in linear momentum in this case what is the initial linear momentum mass into velocity what's the final linear momentum mass into velocity okay what is the change in linear momentum final linear momentum minus initial linear momentum okay keep it aside now the question is what what is change in linear momentum what is change in linear momentum Delta P is equal to final linear momentum is M into V minus initial linear momentum is also M into V. MV minus MV it is zero. Okay. So 99% of the students will do the same whereas it is wrong answer. It is wrong answer. Why it is wrong answer? Because linear momentum is a vector quantity, change in linear momentum is a vector quantity due to velocity. There is a term called velocity. That velocity is also having a direction. Here we have never, we have nowhere considered the directions. Because in the first case, the body is moving in this direction. In the second case, the body is moving in opposite direction. Whereas directions are not same here. We need to take care about the directions also in the numeric. Then only your answer will be correct, right? So let's see. So delta P is equal to final linear momentum. It's MV. Imagine as with this direction, MV. First direction is MV as it is final. So MV, V is positive only I have considered. Okay. Minus initial linear momentum. Initial linear momentum is also MV, right? But initial linear momentum in the opposite direction of the previous one. So then I can write it as minus mv. So what I can write here, mv plus mv, it's 2mv. So this is the correct answer. Okay. Clear. So the students, some of the students might definitely get it down. Sir, you have taken this is as negative sign. What happens if the initial linear momentum is taken as negative? What happens? Let's see. So, change in linear momentum means final linear momentum. Final linear momentum, let us take it as negative. So, minus mv minus initial linear momentum. Already final we have taken as negative. Initial linear momentum, let me take it as positive. So, minus of plus is minus. Minus mv minus mv. It's a minus 2mv. Right? But look at the question. What is the question they are asking? Change in linear momentum, magnitude. They are not asking about sign. They are not asking about the sign. Sign indicates only that initial linear momentum is in the opposite direction of the final linear momentum. That's it. This negative sign indicates initial linear momentum and final linear momentum are opposite to each other. That's it. Okay. It's clear. They are asking only about the magnitude which is 2mv. 
in the previous case also that means when the signs are in interchange you have got same 2 mv as the change in linear momentum so the final answer is magnitude if you want it is just 2 mv so that's it so like this numericals can be asked let's see uh, some more numericals on newton's second law of motion so dear students let's solve another problem here a constant force of 5 newton can produce an acceleration of 1 meter per second square on the body of mass m1 there is a body of mass m1 when this 5 newtons of constant force acting the acceleration produced in it is 1 meter per second square okay so let's see what is the question they have given so there is a body of mass m1 how much force is applied there is a constant force of 5 newtons applied when there is a constant force definitely the acceleration produced also will be constant and that acceleration here is given imagine it's a1 okay so it is 1 meter per second square okay and number two second case what is the second case and two meter per second square on the body of mass m2 the acceleration is two meter per second square when the same force is acting on the other body of mass m2 look at here it is the mass m2 same force is applied which is five newton only here the acceleration is 2 meter per second square so here now if both the masses are tied together and the same force is applied both the masses are tied together so uh, the third case I'm just writing here both the masses are tied together it's m1 and this is m2 both the masses are tied together so now here only system is having one body here system is having one body here the system is having two bodies okay so this is the combination is called as a system now okay on the system so there is a force same force of 5 newton is at what is the acceleration produced of the system that's a question by using Newton's second law, here you can get one equation, here you get an equation, and here also you get an another equation, right? So let's see, the first one equation you get from here, number one, you get an equation like F is equal to, I mean, everywhere we are using the same formula, net force is equal to mass into acceleration only. So this is the only equation we are using to solve this question. First case, force is how much? 5, which is equal to mass. What is the mass of the first body? M1 into, what is the acceleration? It's 1 meter per second square. Clear? It is 1. So from here, what I can write? So I can clearly write it as M1 is equal to 5 kilogram. Is it clear? Everyone, now, second case, if I consider here, you have force is 5 only. M, M is M2 into acceleration. What is acceleration here? It's 2. So what I can write here, M2 is equal to 5 by 2 kilogram. Keep it aside. You can also write 2.5 kg. No problem in that. Now, third case also you can write. Third case is the most in interesting and important thing here. What is the net force acting on the system? 5 newtons only. What is the total mass of the system here? Here total mass is m1. Here total mass is m2. Here total mass is m1 plus m2, right? So it is m1 plus m2. Okay. It's m1 plus m2. And acceleration. What's acceleration? So that's the part we need to find out. Okay, so imagine this is the equation 1. 
Okay, we have two masses here. If you carefully observe the two mass values and the equation number one. In equation number one, what is the unknown? A is only the unknown because M1 and M2 we have got from here. This M1 and M2 you can substitute these values here. Then only unknown in the equation one will become A. So to find that A, it's so simple now, right? So I'm writing here. Substitute mass values in equation number one. Let's substitute. What's the equation number one? Five is equal to m1 plus m2. What is m1? Five plus five by two. Five plus five by two into acceleration a. Is it clear? Acceleration a. Right. So now. Left hand side it's 5, right hand side also you can take common 5, 5 you can take common, so here it is 1 plus 1 by 2 into A, clear? So this 5, 5 gets cancelled here, so this 1 remain here, so here 1 by A is equal to, and what is here, I can say 2 is the LCM and it is 2 plus 1, it's 3. Right, so now here a is equal to 2 by 3. So, what's the 2 by 3 value? 2 by 3 value will be 0 0.67 meter per second square. Is it clear? So, that's the acceleration of this system. Understand? So interesting. In one of the neat exam, also this question was asked. It's not the difficult one, just you need to draw the diagrams. An understanding of the problem is very uh, essential, right? Look at here. Now, as our major focus will be there on the objective type questions in which you have not having a proper practice so far, how to solve the objective type questions in less time, I just wanted to show you a simple shortcut for this question. You will be solving n number of questions and models. With a lot of practice, you will understand what kind of the question is given. Here they are they, they're telling that. So there is a mass, a constant force is applied, acceleration produced is A1. The same constant force is applied on the another body of mass M2, the acceleration produced is A2. Now these two forces, these, these two masses are joined together and on this system, same constant force is applied, find the acceleration, okay? If you carefully observe here, the only data required is acceleration of the first body and acceleration of the second body. So that means your A1 and A2 values are required to solve the problem. You may think that sir, force 5 Newton is also given, whether it is required or not. To solve the problem in a shortcut method, that force is not at all required. Why you know? Here force is 5 Newton, right? And you can see 5, 5 cancel. What is that 5, 5 cancel? It is not a number. It's a force. The force is getting, will, will get cancelled definitely, whatever may be its value. Okay. Clear? So, to solve such kind of problem, we need only A1 and A2, okay? So look at here, the formula I'm telling you, A, the final acceleration, what is your desired value will be, A1 into A2 by A1 plus A2, that's it. I hope you liked it. Just substitute your A1, A2 values, whether you get the correct answer or not, let's check. So, what is your A1, A2? A1 is 1, A2 is 2, right? So, 1 into 2 by 1 plus 2, it's 2 by 3, 2 by 3 is 0 0.67, is it clear? Everyone. So, this is how the numericals will be asked, will be done, can be done in a small time interval. Okay, clear? So, this next question we'll solve now. Let's solve these two numericals also. Bullets of mass 0 0.03 kg each hit a plate at a rate of 
200 bullets per second right per one second how many number of bullets are hitting the plate 200 number of bullets are hitting the plate and each bullet mass is 0.03 kilo with a velocity of 50 meter per second and reflects back with a velocity of 30 meter per second okay imagine it is the plate bullets are each mass m are striking with a velocity 50 meters per second and bouncing back with a velocity 30 meters per second the question is what is the average force acting on the plate wherever it may be the force is equal to mass into acceleration and this force is equal to mass into final velocity minus initial velocity by time here when there is a single mass but here number of masses are there how many number of masses are there n number of masses are there so just you need to multiply with n that's it here m is there mass of each bullet n total number of bullets and t time is given as 1 second because it's clearly mentioned that 200 bullets per second are striking the plate right so per second that means time is the time of contact which is 1 second and v is the final velocity u is the initial velocity right clear now to substitute everything f is equal to n what is m here 0.03 into n what is n 200 bullets into final velocity final velocity is 30 imagine this 30 is taken as positive so 30 meter per second minus initial velocity is 50 and this 30 meter per second and this 50 meter per second are in opposite directions yes or no so definitely this u is 50 need to be taken in the opposite direction or the sign of this 30 so then that will be u is minus 50 minus of minus plus 50 similar to the concept of change in linear momentum okay so divided by time is 1 second that's it here 10 point will come here another zero go point will come here it's called 3 into 2 it's 6 here so f is equal to 6 into so this is 80 understand So finally, F is equal to eight six or forty eight. So total four hundred and eighty newton is the average force acting on the plate. Average force acting on the plate. Now, one. A football player kicks a zero point five kg ball. The mass of the ball is given. A mass of the ball is given zero point five kilogram. And in parts, it's a velocity of 10 meter per second. See, when we kick the ball, the velocity of the ball is 10 meter per second. That means before kicking the ball, what is the velocity of the ball? Definitely zero. Initially, the body is at rest, so initial velocity of the ball is zero because of the force is imparting on it with a velocity 10 meters per second. The contact between the foot and the ball is only one by fiftieth of a second. So time is equal to time of contact one by fifty of a second. Okay. So the kicking force is everything you have, whatever you want, you have. F is equal to m is there. V minus u by t. Everything you have. F is equal to m into v minus u by t. Right, so F is equal to m zero point five into v. It's ten minus zero divided by time is one by fifty. Okay, now F is equal to zero point five into ten. This is one by fifty goes to the numerator, so that will be fifty by one. Right, fifty by one. So here what I can write? So zero. 
and point will come here it's 5 5 into 5 it's 250 newton so i hope you understood the concept of newton's second law of motion okay and similar to this so many numericals also can be discussed and most probably next class we will be solving a sum of numericals based on newton's second law of motion then we will be moving into newton's third law of motion thank you so much